continuing with our series on the Bible in the light of our redemption. That's the basic Bible course. <laughs> it's meaty basic Bible course, I can tell you that. By E.W. Kenyon. Um, Dr. Kenyon went home to be with the Lord about 1948 uh, or somewhere around there. And uh, But we um, his, his writings are a blessing to the kingdom of God. And praise the let me say, I'm sorry, my phone was still volumed up. And I'm, sh I'm sharing myself right now, getting it out there, share, share, get it out there, let people know we're here, and then we're going to jump in. All righty. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So we're in chapter four, or lesson four, and uh, trust that you've been keep keeping up with us. Again, this is a 37-week uh, study. And so if you're hopping in and saying, well, I've already missed the first, that's all right. We've got 33 more weeks to go, and you can uh, catch up. We, um, we encourage you to order this. You, again, you can pick this up on Amazon.com uh, or Walmart.com for about $15, which includes shipping, uh, and I, you know, plus or minus. Um, and um, join up with us and be a part of our Bible study here on Wednesday nights. Until next year, sometime around the end of May, 1st of June. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Tonight, the reign of spiritual death. The reign, R-E-I-G-N, okay, um, of spiritual death. Talked about last week, you know, that death doesn't mean the cessation of existence. It is a separation. <clears throat> spiritual death is a separation of the human spirit from God, who is spiritual life. And um, physical death is a separa separation of the human spirit from the physical body. And the eternal death or the second death is that eternal separation of the human spirit from the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Does not mean you cease to exist. Hallelujah. So um, l last week we talked about the entrance of spiritual death in the man. Um, how that the dominance and persistence of sin uh, has a a rule and a sway and a control over man what, because man became a partaker of the satanic nature. And that nature is spiritual death, separation from God. The reign of spiritual death heads up in Satan. Uh, we look at Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 real quick. I hope everybody's had a great day. And moaning about that. <laughs> Ephesians 2, 1. And you, happy quicken. Now, that's not in the King James, happy quicken. It's, uh, I mean, not in the Greek. It's added. <clears throat> they pulled it from further down and pulled it back up there um, out of verse 5. But we'll just we'll read it. Go ahead and read it that way. And you, happy quicken, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Prince of the power of the air, Satan. Um, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom we also had our conversation. Conversation is an old, old English word uh, used to translate uh, manner of life or lifestyle. Okay? So we all had our manner of life or lifestyle in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Okay. So, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened, again, an old English word meaning make alive, hath made us alive unto, uh, together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. And so we have here, um, the declaration of the fact that man is sold into captivity and bondage <coughs> to spiritual death, and then it reigned over him, and they, they, man acted out of that nature in the lust of the flesh and of the mind. Why? Because the spirits now spirits are dead. He's no longer living out of the realm of life, out of his spirit. He's flesh and and carnal ruled. Um. You, or his life, man's life being ordered by the prince of the power of the air, Satan. There is no logical reason for man to do um, 
the things and, and act the way he does in response to sin unless it's his nature. Okay? And man is in fellowship with sin. The, the crazy stuff you see today, there is no. I mean, LBGTQ plus Z, we, binary, non-binary, two spirit, one spirit, um, you know, um, what, I mean, they keep adding letters to it. Everything on there but normal. There's no response to that. There's no logical reason for that unless a relationship between man and spiritual death is at the core and the center of that. Remember, it, every bit of that alphabet mess is a direct mockery and rebellion against God, for he, he made them male and female, created he them. And therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife, male and female. We got people going around saying, I'm neither male nor female. Yeah, well, you are. Okay? But the only reason, only way you can explain that, and, and all of a sudden, have you noticed it, how uh, ever since the Supreme Court legalized uh, homosexual marriage, that this stuff has just been unleashed and gone crazy through the earth to where now, if you don't accept somebody who's, who's non-binary or if they're binary or if they're, uh, don't know what they are, you're not, you're crazy. Okay. You're abnormal. If you don't accept their craziness, well, that's because it's a relationship of man and satanic, demonic, rebellious nature working against the things of God. Okay. Now it doesn't, listen, it doesn't mean that God didn't love people even when they were dead in their trespasses and sins. <coughs> he quickened us together and made us alive together with Christ. God's love for us is there. So it doesn't mean we hate people who are messed up just like God loved them when they were messed up and made provision for their redemption when they were messed up. We love people when they're messed up, but it doesn't make their messed up right and normal. It's still messed up and it is a fruit. It is a consequence. It is a, um, built on the foundation of spiritual death and may, fallen man's unity and unification to spiritual death. Okay. Um, the Father God's made known his will to man. His will for man was to eat the tree of life and partake of his nature. Yet he chose another way. There are three wills, God's will, Satan's will, man's will. Man is a dependent spirit. He must be joined to what God's will or Satan's will. Now what happened in the Garden of Eden? Man had the temptation given to him or the, or the Satan tempted him by telling him that he would be as a God, knowing both good and evil, <coughs> that God was hiding, holding out on him, that Adam, if he ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, would become an independent spirit, a non-subordinate spirit, and could rule and reign on his own without God or Satan. That's what, that was the selling point. Not necessarily that he would bow down and worship the devil and become subordinate to the devil. He, God knows that in that day you, you'll become his gods. Okay? Knowing both good and evil. God's holding out on you. You don't have to be a subordinate spirit. You can be an independent spirit. Well, the lie was, and still is, that the moment he partook of that fruit, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he was born again from life unto death. He took on Satan's nature. Notice that even Satan said that they would know both good and evil. There's not a good, evil, and an in-between. There's not good, God, evil, Satan, and um, what, what's a word for... Um, so help me out here. It's somewhere in between. Um, that's neither good nor evil. It would be, huh? 
neutral. Neutral. Man, man can be a neutral spirit between the two realms of good and evil and do his own thing. Well, no, it's good and evil. It's good or evil. And you're going to be subordinated to the will of good by God or to the will of evil by Satan. Okay? And so when Adam committed the high treason, he that evil nature entered into him and he became Satan became his father. Jesus said in John 8 44, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. Yikes. This this rush of um, evil into humanity, the moment that Adam committed high treason, uh, now begins to affect all of creation. That's that reign of spiritual death moving into man, man becoming um, unlike what God created him to be. I mean, as soon as, God, as, as he's born again, okay, man begins to degrade. When I say born again, born, un, born again into the kingdom of darkness, Satan becomes his spiritual father. He becomes a different creature than he was in what God created. He's no longer the man that God created, alive unto God in harmony relationship with the will of God and the heart of God and the image of God. He's now taken on the characteristics of Satan. He is by nature, as the word scripture says, a child of wrath. He doesn't respond to the call of God. Remember, God came down the cool of the day and said, Adam, and Adam hid himself. He says, where are you? He said, I've hid myself for we were naked. Who told you you were naked? Did you eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And uh, he said, well, here goes. No, not yes. Well, you know, that woman you gave me, she got me to eat it. Now, now he's conniving, passing the buck. Won't even stand up to his own, his own um, responsibilities. And God looks at the woman, what have, what have you done? Well, I, the, the serpent beguiled me, deceived me, and I did eat. And then he turns to the serpent, curses him. On his belly he'll crawl all the days of his life. The seed of the serpent, um, the seed of the woman will bust your head, bruise your head, and you'll bruise his heel. That's found in Genesis 3, uh, 8 through 13. Then in verse 15, the virgin birth is prophesied. <clears throat> Man's now become an outlaw. He's driven out of the garden. Um, we find in Genesis 3, 22 through 24, that God puts uh, the cherubims there to guard the entrance to the garden because man can no longer enter in to the Garden of Eden where the tree of life remains. Okay? Man's driven out. This is very significant. Why? Because had man gone and partaken of the tree of, the, of life after the eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, we would have sealed permanently man's estate in a schizophrenic position. And we have no idea what the consequences and results of that <coughs> spirit would be. There would be no redemption. So God had to stop it. So man was driven out. Um, then we see uh, almost immediately the, con the, the absolute reign of death in man where uh, Adam and Eve have children and um, Cain rises up and kills Abel out of anger because he tries to bring fruit to God and God won't accept it. Why? Because God will only, only accept a blood sacrifice. Okay? Abel brought the blood sacrifice. Cain tried to bring his works to God for redemption. And God could not accept his works. Only by the blood of an innocent animal could man's forgiveness be procured. So God could not accept the fruit <clears throat> of Cain's labors as his offering before him. Well, Cain got ticked off about it. Works oriented people always do. Did I get a grunt, amen, or anything out of anybody? I got a head shake. Thank you. Got one grunt, one head shake. All right. 
Hallelujah. And um, Adam had sold all of mankind, even the ones that weren't born into captivity, bondage of Satan. Why? Remember in the garden, God gave man the right to procreate. All of his creation was in the loins of Adam. And when he committed high trees, he was born again from life unto death. Then all that passed on to every generation to be born. We see it manifest in Cain and Abel. Then God gives and grants um, Eve another child, Seth, who has born to him Enosh. And the name Enosh, or Enos as King James puts it, um, meant that he was death-doomed, frail, mortal, basically Satan-ruled. Now despair is taking over humanity. Creation is now crying out with, you know, the consequences of the animal kingdom being out of order now. The lion now kills the lamb. We see in Revelation how the lion and the lamb lay together. There's a restoration. Hallelujah. In that new heaven and new earth, there's a restoration to the proper order. And the Bible even tells us that creation groans, cries for the manifestation of the sons of God. What? To bring order. To bring order back to the creation in the way that God intended for it to be. Hallelujah. Satan was a murderer and a liar. Manifesting Cain. And then Cain lies about it. Where's your brother Abel? I don't know. I'm not my, bro I'm not my brother's keeper. He knew exactly where he was. He killed him. Instead of seeing the beauty of God's creation every day. Creation's in disarray. And Adam has to witness the ongoing disruption of the creation of God because of his actions of high treason in the Garden of Eden. Spiritual death, as one translation says, had seized the sovereignty over man. Was now ruling, iron-clad, iron fist rule over man. Driving him into defeat. Driving him to live shorter and shorter and shorter lifespans. Inflicting sickness and disease upon him. Causing the creation to bring forth thistles and thorns. Drought, plights. All kind of, you know, the earth and upheaval with earthquakes. And um, volcanic eruptions and all kinds of things. All things that were in perfect order and harmony before the fall. And man, his creation grovels under the iron fist rule of the fall of man. Man becomes more and more defeated, beaten down, and oppressed by Satan's rule. Now man looks to rule over man, to lord over other men, to inflict pain and, and, and harm on other people. Man's lost love, lost joy, lost peace, <clears throat> rest. And out of this spiritual death becomes the birth of reason. Man now tries to figure everything out with his head. Think of this creation that was created with the intellect capable of communing with God Naming all the animals. Now, like we said this before, man did not come from Cro-Magnum, you know, mugga mugga cave man, ugga ugga, Neanderthal, you know, walk around club, blah, blah, fire, fire, we do fire, acting like a bunch of, you know, illiterate whatevers. He communed with the Creator. He spoke and walked in fellowship with the Creator. But the fall of man brought in spiritual death, and thus. A carnal mind. And whereas man before had fought in a realm higher, the spirit realm, <clears throat> he's now relegated to gaining all information from the physical world. His senses now tell him what is real and what is not real. 
his senses begin to master, have the mastery over him. And in it having the mastery over him, he begins to formulate ideas, formulate um, philosophies that are all born out of human reasonings. The theory of evolution is nothing more than a human reasoning trying to figure out how all this stuff got here. And, um, you know, um, Darwin's theory, and they came, writes it all out, and then people buy, oh, yeah, that, that's it. And, of course, he died that, um, recanting his position on that. Okay? But that was birthed out of human reason, man figuring out, you know. And they're called theories because we have no proof. There's a reason they can't find the missing link. It was never there. Hello. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Because spiritual death entered in, man ceased to walk in the realm of the spirit, uh, the spirit of life with God. Before he walked with God, communed with God, but now his spirit's dominated and ruled by darkness. Before he'd walked in the faith realm, the realm of omnipotent power, called things which be not as though they were. Adam had walked as the under ruler of the one who had framed the worlds by the words of his mouth, by faith. Now that his unity with God is severed, man's ability is severed from God's ability, and man's word was severed from God's word. He no longer had the creative authority that he once had that God granted him. Man fell from the realm of God's ability into the realm of human ability, which had now been subordinated to the fallen archangel Lucifer, Beelzebub Satan, who now lorded over man. His mind only believes what it can see, what it can hear, what it can taste, what it can touch, what it can smell. These senses are limited because they, the physical world is a reflection of the spiritual world, which is the higher realm. Then, when Adam committed high treason, the spirit realm of the earth went into chaos. And as he continues this, faith begins to die. Unbelief replaces it. You ever heard people talk, uh, something happens, and I mean, it happens right in front of them. I don't believe it. How can you not believe it? It happened right in front of them. I just don't believe it. Well, but faith people are calling those things just be not as though they were. God looked into the out into nothingness and said, light be, light was. God spoke and created things. Hallelujah. Look at Romans chapter 8. We'll look at verses 1 through 11. The 8th chapter of the book of Romans. But this is all in relationship to the reign of spiritual death over man. Man is degrading. Man degrades. Romans 8, 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law, or made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So now look at this, because the carnal mind, you might want to underline this, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Think about that. Do we notice a mind is now taking such a prominent position 
that we have to try to we have to work towards it being spiritually and not uh, carnal. Man, the fallen man is now governed by a carnal mind. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you're not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken, make alive your mortal bodies <coughs> by the spirit that dwelleth in you. In, uh, in other words, we're now at a point in the new birth because you're born again. The, the flesh no longer has the sovereignty over your existence. It's dead in its sovereignty. The spirit alive unto God now has the sovereignty. But in, in the fallen state, man's body rules over him through the carnal mind, just fulfilling whatever the mind or the body dreams up. I'm a duck today. I'm a girl today. I don't know what I am today. I'm a donkey today. Uh, you know, I mean, just whatever it pops into your brain. And then you go out, you got people going out in public dressed up in cat suits because they identify as a cat. Going out to people going, meow, meow, meow. Don't come up to me. I got holy water and anointing oil and a little thing on my belt clip. I'll take it and throw it all over you and cast that thing out of you. You unclean devil. You meow this. <laughs> craziness but that is coming from a carnal death doomed mind can I get an old me out there I know that might, probably not a hallelujah icon you put it there but an old me would work um, hallelujah it's true man for, is forming the conception of the world of himself by his senses Remember, uh, um, Van Crouch came to our church. He's, he's teaching and said, guy went to see a doctor and the, said, doctor said, what's wrong with him? And he said, I feel so ugly. He said, turn, he said, turn over face down on the couch. Because <laughs> he feels so ugly. <laughs> you know, and um, praise the Lord for help. And uh, Jesus is our answer. That probably wasn't the right kind of help the guy needed. Um, but man, we look in the mirror, and I don't feel pretty. I don't feel this. I, f I, feel like, I feel like a woman, but I'm a man, so I'm going to go out and be a woman. And only illogical, de death-doomed, uh, demon-governed minds could accept that as normal. People aren't in faith anymore. It's died. The supernatural's lost. Reason takes over. See, reason says... Well, everybody needs love. Violating the word of God. Everybody does need love. <clears throat> and that love is not found in physical appetites and the lust of the flesh or the lust of the mind. It's found in Jesus Christ, God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, where he loves humanity even when they're dead in their trespasses and sins. Okay? He doesn't overlook the trespasses and sins. He loves them in spite of it and bids them to come out from their captivity and enjoy the life of this whole new realm that comes through the new birth and the birth of the human spirit with God. Hallelujah. Um, so we now can live outside the realm of the law of the spirit of death, of sin and death. The mind of the flesh is composed of the destructions that made the material of sensation. 
which the mind receives from the physical senses. In other words, reason is the product of man's senses and it has always been enmity against God. Faith is being against God, against faith, or any act that is above the realm of human ability. Reason will not allow you. Reason will not allow you to accept as reality God, faith, the supernatural, going beyond anything you can, you can touch, hear, smell, taste, have access to. Civilization becomes the cultivation of arts that please the senses. No matter how high your aim may be, you can never arise past the level of your senses. The walk in the spirit has been lost. The cry of the spirit remains unanswered. So at the very dawn of human history, reason has gained the, the supremacy over man. The history of the human race has been, has been a revelation of First John 5, 19. The whole world laugh in the embrace of the evil one. Sin has ruled as a king of the realm of spiritual death, where man lives under the cruel emperor, Satan. Satan promises that sin will please you and make you fulfilled and happy. And it can never fulfill the heart longing for reconciliation to the creator. The spirit of life. <clears throat> He's not been able to strike at the root cause of sin, of the sickness, of death. Sick, sickness and disease has fastened itself on humanity, scourging humanity. Death, the supreme problem that all men in all periods of life have faced, casts a shadow on everything that people try to do. Remember Brother Hagin used to say that we're not ready to live until we're ready to die. You can't enjoy life until you're ready for the, to face death. And it doesn't mean you come at peace with the fact that you're going to, it's all going to end one day and you're going to evaporate. It means that your state in eternity is settled. With God, you'll never enjoy life until that takes place. Well, as man lies in the embrace of Satan, mankind cries in agony against this, this vain struggle, which only ends in hopeless death and doom. Despite all the upheaval of man's failure in, in creation, the marks of design are still there. We still see elements. We still see the handiwork of God <clears throat> was there in the beginning. Although man can't figure out the reason for his existence between birth and death, he still, is hope. he still hopes. He still hopes for the fulfillment of his, of his destiny, fulfillment of of his reason for being there, of the purpose of his existence. What he doesn't understand is his spirit is hungering for God. So reason, in order to appease this inner longing that can't be satisfied in any way, comes up with ideas. There is no God. There is no life after death. There is nothing awaiting you. When you die, you die like a dog. How do you know a dog don't go anywhere? According to the movie, all dogs go to heaven. That's a joke. Okay? It may not be a joke. They might be in heaven. Um, man's been blinded by now his spiritual father, Satan. And that Satan being the enemy of God and the ruler of this world, man does not know that by the trespass of one, death sees the sovereignty of humanity. The nature of Satan, which is spiritual death, is the soil out of which has grown sin, sickness, physical death, and every sorrow that has darkened the life of God's man. Look at Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 and 18.
This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you walk henceforth, that you henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them um, because of the blindness of their heart. He gives the picture of humanity as a result of the interest of spiritual death. Alienated, blinded. Man's alienated from God's life. Walks in the realm of reason. Tries to figure stuff out. Make stuff makes, and, and then they want to argue with you on an intellectual realm about the existence of God. You can't argue. God's not understood with reason. He's understood through faith and revelation. Amen. In the vanity of his mind, which is darkened, he fruitlessly and futurely searches for the answer to his existence. Man has, has become utterly hopeless to redeem himself. And by his own efforts, it can't be done. When he, when he obeyed Satan, Adam obeyed Satan, bringing himself and his authority under Satan's subjection, he had no authority to set himself free. One man sealed the fate of all humanity. And no man could ever redeem humanity that was born in the lineage of Satan, of Adam. If man were to be redeemed, someone greater than Satan, outside the realm of Adam's lineage, would have to come. And there was only one spirit being that could do that. And that was God himself. So the son, the second person of the Godhead, had to come. He had to come and redeem man. Um, it's more, it's not just merely God forgiving man. You see, man could be forgiven, but because of his nature, he'd have to be forgiven again. And then uh, because in him when he sinned again, he was sinning again because like his nature was sinful. So it was not simply that man could be forgiven <clears throat> and then that was going to take care of it. Man had to be transformed. Hello? Man had to be transformed. The power of sin and the authority of sin that had seized the sovereignty had to be broken. And that was not merely through the forgiveness of sin. There had to be a transformation. That's why Jesus told Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. That's why Peter said um, that um, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That's why Paul wrote and said, uh, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things are new and all things are of God. There had to be an absolute transformative change to the very nature of man <clears throat> out of the image of Satan and once again restored into the image of God. Hallelujah. Under the old covenant, Israel was God's covenant people, but they were still spiritually dead. And year after year after year after year after year, they had continually to bring the sacrifices, continue to bring the sacrifices, continue to bring the sacrifices. But once at the end of the age, glory to God, Jesus came by his own blood to redeem us. Hallelujah. Praise God. They were continually reminded of their state of spiritual death. It was only good till next year, then you had to do it again. And it was only good till the next year, and you had to do it again. So redemption had to be more than forgiveness. It must be giving of, the new, of a new nature, a nature that would create the spirit of man, recreate the spirit of man into the image of God. And it could only be received by receiving the nature of God into a spirit. But now man's subordinate to Satan. Man's in communion with Satan. He can't just come in and get a new nature. He can't go, well, I'm going to get a different nature. You don't see, we don't convert to Christianity. No man converts to Christianity has what I'm talking about. 
Jesus said, ye must be born again. There must be a change of your nature, not, not of your will and your desire to, you know, live a good life and to follow the teachings of the prophet Jesus because he's a good teacher and I like the things he said. And you feel, you, you, what you've done is you've taken what Jesus intended for a spiritual rebirth and renewal and change and brought it down into the realm of reason. And by following these precepts of loving this person or being kind to that one and doing this, you now can become a Christian. Where Christian didn't really necessarily mean a follower of Christ as much as it meant little Christ. Well, that's what the Bible says we are, really. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. Amen. So fear, spiritual, in order for this to happen, spiritual death had to absolutely be destroyed in the life of man. The nature of Satan had to be eradicated from man's nature so that he could stand as free from satanic authority as though he had never been under it. The body of sin, spiritual death, had to be done away with. Man must be delivered from the authority of Satan. Satan, who realms, reigns in the rule of, realm of death, must be dethroned from his position of Lord of, as Lord of man. And man must be delivered from even any fear of his old master who had held him in bondage. This man will be free to receive the life of God. God had a work to do. We remember, remember we talked about earlier how God drove man out of the Garden of Eden so he would not receive the tree of life while he was spiritually dead. Man needs life, the nature of God, but he can't impart his own nature until the man, until he first made it legally possible for man to be free from the nature of Satan. Forgiveness on the part of God and reformation or education on the part of man would not strike at the root of sin and spiritual death. Just as Adam had been born again of the satanic nature when he sinned, who is a child of wrath, he must be born again born of the life of God that will make him a son of God. And this life of God within the spirit of man would set him free from the law of sin and death. The nature of God will give to man the ability to walk with the father as Christ walked with him. Jesus Christ, although tempted by Satan, was able to walk absolutely in the father's will, pleasing the father with authority over Satan. Remember Jesus said, Satan cometh, and he hath nothing in me. Glory to God. He hath nothing in me. And I can say that today. I'm born again. My nature is born of God. The, the evil one can come, but he hath nothing in me. He has no authority over me. He cannot force me into sin. He cannot force me into defeat. He doesn't have the authority. The nature, okay, we already read that. Um, this is because you, did not, you no longer belong in the realm of spiritual death, but you possess the spirit of life of God. Eternal life within the spirit of man today makes him an heir of God and a joint heir with Christ. The man who's been born again stands before the Father as Christ stood in his earth walk. And man has the same freedom from satanic dominion and authority that Jesus did. And he has the same ability to please the Father as Jesus did. Eternal life will set man free, even from the law of disease whose own self bear our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin shall live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. First Peter 2.24. Hallelujah. Man's receiving of eternal life will make it possible for him to receive the Spirit of God and for God to dwell in him. It brings man back into the realm of God, God's ability the realm where all things are possible. Man will be able to walk again in the realm of the spirit, the faith realm, where he lives by the word of God. Eternal life will meet the need of man 
and the heart cry of the Father for fellowship. But before eternal life can be given to man, he must be declared righteous. And man must have a legal right to take man from Satan into his family. Now we're going to move into next week, uh, you know, man's need for righteousness. So, so we're building. We're, we're getting you further along. Let's go over the uh, study questions today. Um, Again, I encourage you because we can't, you know, we can't dwell on these long enough for you to copy them as I write them. <clears throat> um, so I would encourage you, you know, we go back and, and take the replay and go through if you don't get these. Name the three wills that are in the world. And that's God's will, Satan's will, man's will. That was pretty easy. Explain Matthew 6, 24. Well, let's read Matthew 6, 24. So when we explain it, we'll. And Matthew 26, 4, don't work. Come on. No man can serve two masters, for he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. It reveals to us that although man has a free will to choose his will, I mean, to choose, his will is ultimately subjected to either the will of God or Satan. You're going to serve one or the other. Why was man driven out of the Garden of Eden after he died spiritually? Now, this would be great if we were in a, you know, in a, in a Wednesday night church service where we could you know, have the back and forth response, but, you know, we're, we're still not there yet. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Had Adam eaten the tree of life, he would have sealed man's fate eternally in a state of having the nature of God and Satan united in one being and redemption would have become impossible. Number four, which incident reveals the working of spiritual death within the sons of Adam? Well, that's easy. Cain murders, a murders Abel and then lies about it, thus revealing the nature of Satan, a murderer and a liar at work. Why did reason gain the supremacy over faith? Because of man's fall, he became dependent upon his own resources. Though these resources are limited to his mind and body. He derives his information from his physical senses and then forms his conclusions upon, based upon them. Faith in, is born, I mean, reason is born and faith dies. And that's why we come back, we get born again, we teach on faith, we teach on believing the word of God. We are reprogramming man after he's born again to be like he was before in the garden because he was programmed his whole life. That's why the renewing of the mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? For question six, how does civilization reveal the fact that spiritual death dwells Within the spirit of man. Answer. Despite man's greatest efforts, he has not been able to eradicate sin, sickness, disease, or war, which have been known to every age of human existence. History reveals that the rise of every civilization then is accompanied with the decline in morality. Spiritual death, spiritual death ultimately takes its toll. They want to explain why forgiveness of sin alone will not meet the, meet the need of lost men. And although God could forgive the sins of man um, and can, he would have to be continually doing so. Man's nature changed at the fall to that of the nature of Satan. Man's nature, therefore, must be changed back to the nature of God. Why must God undertake man's redemption? No man could ever redeem mankind because he himself would have been under the satanic authority. God himself must redeem man in the form of man in order to be as man, but not under satanic authority. Why and how will eternal life meet man's needs? Eternal life meets man's need by restoring him to the pre-fall status with God. That is the right relationship with him. He's now able to live from his spirit and to live by faith. 
Explain Romans 8, 11. Let me, let's just read that. This we're going to, this we're finishing up right here. Romans 8, 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, um, then he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And this is not a reference to the resurrection, but rather to that the spirit of God dwelling within man now will give life and healing to his mortal death doomed body. He will undo the authority of sickness and disease over that death doomed body. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, I hope you got something out of this and enjoyed this tonight. Like I said, next week we'll talk about man's need for righteousness. And um, we'll, we'll get into that and be, you know, have a good time together. Um, don't forget Sunday. Um, we'll continue our series on the fruit of the spirit. We're ministering on long suffering. And uh, next Tuesday night prayer, next Wednesday night Bible study. And, and goes on and on and on and on. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, we love you. God bless you. Thank you for being with us tonight. I want, to want you to remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. We'll see you next time here. Faith and Victory Church online. Hallelujah. Good night.